Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on March 16, 2011, I joined my co-chairs of the Congressional Progressive uh, Caucus Task Force on Peace and Security and 76 other members of Congress in sending a letter to the President asking him to move swiftly to end America's longest war, the war in Afghanistan. Since then, the co-chairs have continued to call on the administration to move towards a significant, swift, and sizable reduction in our troops in Afghanistan, meeting or exceeding the number of troops on the ground before the escalation. Similarly, the Democratic National Committee, of which I am vice chair, called for a sizable and significant drawdown beginning in July. Even the U.S. Conference of Mayors called for an end to the Afghanistan war. In poll after poll, the majority of Americans are consistently calling for an end to this war. A significant redeployment of U.S. troops from Afghanistan beginning this month would have sent a clear message that the United States does not seek a permanent presence in Afghanistan. This move would recognize that we cannot afford the war in Afghanistan, costing nearly $10 billion per month, while American families struggle to stay afloat amid the slow recovery of our nation's economy. The co-chairs of the CPC Task Force on Peace and Security believe that a significant, swift, and sizable troop reduction in Afghanistan is necessary, especially given the fact that the CBO reported recently that ending the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq would save this country $1.7 trillion, and especially given the fact that a recent Brown University study shows that the United States has spent $3.7 trillion in these wars since 2001. Anything less hurts our nation's future and is unacceptable. It is time to focus on securing a future of economic opportunity and prosperity for the American people, and the President must move swiftly and boldly to end the war in Afghanistan and bring our troops home now. The President's announcement last month does not reflect a significant policy change in Afghanistan. This strategy does not represent a drawdown in Afghanistan, but rather aims at maintaining the status quo through the end of 2012. Simply removing the 30,000 surge troops from Afghanistan means that by the end of summer of 2012, we will be exactly where we were in late 2009. Tens of thousands of American soldiers will continue to fight a battle that their commanders insist will only end with a political solution. Peace in Afghanistan would depend ultimately on an Afghan solution, not on American soldiers. Everyone seems tired of this war, from Republicans and Democrats in Washington to Afghans in Kabul to Americans in Kansas. Administration officials acknowledged that due to Americans' mounting debt and deficits, war costs at nearly $120 billion annually for Afghanistan alone are no longer sustainable. Republicans gave similar ground with Appropriations Chair Harold Rogers and Defense Subcommittee member Jack Kingston expressing concern about the costs, the mission, and the lack of progress. Bolstering Republican Senator Dick Lugar's call for troop withdrawal from Afghanistan. Nearly half the House weighed in during the recent defense authorization debate with a call for an accelerated plan to draw down troops and transition to Afghan control. Moving be beyond what a Washington wants, consider the Afghans who are at the receiving end of all of this after a series of serious civilian casualties resulting from multiple indiscriminate NATO bombings, Afghan President Hamid Karzai has declared opposition to any and all airstrikes on Afghan homes. This adds to Karzai's insistence that foreign forces must end, must end night raids, stop unilateral operations and stay off roads and out of Afghan villages. The Afghan people are in no more pleased than Karzai with America's continued presence Hardly a surprise, given that General Petraeus has increased bombing throughout the country by 80% in the last year alone. According to a recent poll, nearly 6 out of 10 Afghans said Western troops must leave on or before the original July 2011 withdrawal date. Only 17% say that the deployment should be maintained longer. After spending hundreds of billions of American tax dollars the security and day-to-day -day life in many regions of Afghanistan isn't improving. Crime, 
economic opportunity and freedom of movement are getting worse, not better. Availability of electricity, food, medical care, and schools has shown little or no improvement in uh, recent years. So, for all these reasons and more, the case is clear. We need to end this war in Afghanistan, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for this time.